It's a women's strawweight showcase just outside of the top 15. Coming up this weekend, we have Brazilian powerhouse Yasmin Lucindo. That short pit stop at flyweight, her last time out. She's taking on Instagram thirst trap. An absolute winner, winner, chicken dinner. Pollyanna Viana and I have my wife doing the intros to these or at least filming on the other side of the camera not on the GoPro. She's wondering why I'm saying Instagram thirst trap for Pollyanna Viano. It's really awkward when you have to look up what camp she's training out of on her Instagram because there are some racy pictures that are out there but for Viana, she's been on a crazy crazy win streak and I thought in my head getting ready for this one big cloud above me so that one's kind of freaky but I thought getting ready for this I have a bad read on Pollyanna Viana. so I went back and I watched our predictions for her fights I picked uh, her to beat Emily Whitmire I picked Mallory Martin to beat Viana. I picked uh, Tabitha Ricci to beat Viana, and then I picked Viana to beat Ginny Fry I'm actually three and one in picking uh, fights for Pollyanna Viana of late and she's a really tricky fighter because she will accept the ground for quite a while somebody's doing a uh, what do you call those? Somebody's doing a gender reveal behind us, so that's interesting. I'll try and float that into the picture. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it. Maybe my wife will film it. A lot of yellow, pink smoke going on in the background over there. All right, so gender reveal going on in the background. A lot of pink smoke out. That's interesting. That uh, can't be good for the environment, but with Pollyanna Viana fights, she came onto the radar with Jungle fights with a knockout win over Amanda Hebus. And I'll kind of overlay some pictures out of that fight, but she's interesting because she can strike. We've seen that. She can grapple. We've seen that. Wrestling isn't really at the forefront of her game. So she struggles with the takedown defense, but it's almost by design like Mackenzie Dern. And when she's in full guard, she can really open up her submissions. You saw that against Mallory Martin. You've seen that throughout the career of Pollyanna Viana. But when she accepts the bottom position, like she did against Tabitha Ricci, it didn't really work out all that well for her. So if you do consider it for Viana, I mean, 13 wins, 13 by finish, five by knockout, eight by submission, and 12 of those 13 wins by finish well, all of them for Viana eight of them in the first round so it'll be interesting to see or sorry 12 of them in the first round it'll be interesting to see what we get out of Viana in this one the good full guard but we haven't seen her since November of last year when she beat Jinyu Fry 722,000 Instagram followers for Pollyanna Viana so again hopefully my wife under there over there she understands a little bit more of that Pollyanna Viana game. But when you look at a fight like this for Yasmin Lucindo, she's kind of billed as, uh, or she was put in a main card spot in Lucindo's UFC debut. That was against a former Combate champ, Yasmin Hauregi. And people were saying Hauregi, myself included, might be a future title challenger until her last time out where she did get finished. So for Hauregi, a little bit on the downturn, but for Lucindo, it's a bit of a bummer because after the Hauregi Lucindo wild fight of the night, well, it just so happened that Landwehr versus Onamo was the next fight on the card. So they didn't get the bonus, and then Landwehr Onamo was a possible fight of the year. But what do we know about Lucindo? Well, we know that the takedowns, they are very good. You know what? Why don't we just throw it on over to a clip of Yasmin Lucindo so you can get a little bit of Matt. We, we've been missing Matt out here in the open one. For Yasmin Lucindo, <clears throat> different origin story and not as good. It's, it's kind of, it's unfortunate, but... In 2021, Guillerme Cruz wrote an article on Lucindo. The title was MMA prospect Yasmin Lucindo turned pro at age 14 to defend mother aunts from domestic violence. And it's unfortunate it's an and it's backstory. crazy. And for Lucindo, she's a main training partner of one, Matt's favorite fighter, Vina Jantidoba. So you do love to see that. But for Lucindo, I looked at this as, okay, she gets into MMA as, you know, a Muay Thai artist. And then I go watch her fights, having that knowledge in my head. And I thought, what the f***? She's not a Muay Thai artist at all. She she throws the the a really good right kick to the body, up kind of close to the shoulder of her opponents. She stands back and throws arm punches. And then she goes for the takedown. It's lights out. Like, she's wrapping the legs like Habib up against the cage. I was really, really impressed by Lucindo with her groundwork, the way that she's able to flow through positions, multiple takedowns in fights. She doesn't really slow with her wrestling as the fight goes on. 
Her striking gets more labored, for sure. But I really did like what I saw. And oh, by the way, she's only 20 years old, too. And that's my big issue with Lucindo. It's not necessarily about her game right now. It's her age and her experience factor at this level. Like, Song Yadong is one of the few fighters I can think of who came in when he was 20 years old. And we still know who he is right now. Like, you guys probably know who Sage Northcutt is. But you've never watched him fight in a UFC octagon. My, my only, you know, kind of th zig to zag where you're going with this. She did beat, uh, old Sarah Froda. Down on the regional scene, I did like that. And her last win over uh, Rhea, over with, what was it? She looked good in her last win, I will and give that you. Was, but... And that was a fighter that had a win on Dana White's Contender Series as well. But she Sarah Flota is a fighter who missed weight in the UFC and did not look great at all. So I will agree with you. Lucinda did look good in her last matchup. I think Lucindo has a ground advantage over... And it's going to be weird. I think she has a ground advantage to Strawweight over a lot of different fighters. I think she's going to make it really interesting. And in this matchup... I think she has a distinct advantage because Yasmin Hauregi was getting ready for a fight against Estela Nunes. The fight was called off July 14th. Carlos Contreras Legaspi tweeted that uh, Lucindo is in on the matchup. So Hauregi already had a camp going for somebody who only strikes. Estela Nunes is a terrible grappler in this division defensively. Oh, yeah, I would agree. So it's striker versus striker. It's a fun fight. It's it's boxer versus kickboxer. It would have sold tickets, butts and seats at the Apex or Pachanga Resort and Casino outside of San Diego. But now in this matchup, you got to get ready for a grappler in Lucindo. Lucindo is already getting ready for a lot of different strikers. Lucindo's so I think it's not Damian Maya though. No, but she's pretty damn good at this women's strawweight division. So, the short notice, the it is what it is type of nature for Lucinda, or last time out, shakes on Brogan, the Bear, Walker. And if you do look at that fight, I mean, she was a minus 360 favorite against Walker. She goes out there, all three judges scored at 30 27. Uh, purple belt and BJJ for Lucindo, brown belt for Pollyanna Viana. And we'll, I'll be interested to see. I mean, do the jiu jitsu belts really even equate to much in this fight? Is it like a Habib's a white? belt type of situation i guess that remains to be seen in this matchup though it'll be interesting because if lucindo decides to follow viana to the ground she could get herself caught viana is a very good striker down the middle you saw that her last time out against Jinu fry multiple unanswered strikes in that blitz and viana gets the knockout win so when it comes to this one i ever so slightly am gonna go with Yasmin Lucindo, Matt as well in this one, but really interested to hear your thoughts on this fight because women's strawweight got the club going up on a Tuesday and you got a title fight coming up with Lamos challenging. A lot of moving pieces in this division. Really want to hear from you, your thoughts on this one. I'm chilling, we're on the water. We got some big time fights left on this card. You're not gonna to want to miss any of it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get into it. <laughs> 